Superman Returns did what a lot of directors had tried and failed to do since 1987, which was bring Superman back to the movies. After a staggering four cancelled movies, at least by that point, it's honestly a minor miracle that this movie wasn't cancelled as well. Unfortunately, though, a triumphant return this was not. It garnered mixed reviews from critics, and it didn't make as much money as Warner Brothers wanted it to, considering that they'd wasted millions of dollars on those cancelled Superman movies. So to them, $391 million seemed like chump change. Despite this, a sequel for Superman Returns was still going to happen, with a planned release of 2009 or 2010. So what if it happened? What if somehow Warner Brothers decided not to risk rebooting, and they decided to instead keep things simpler and make a straight up sequel? Simply put, what if Superman Returns 2 was made? Returns, as I said, wasn't exactly as big of a hit as Warner Bros. was hoping for. It faced steep competition from the long-awaited Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest, and it just didn't succeed as much as they wanted it to. And on top of that, reviews which were initially stellar didn't exactly stick with most people, who changed their minds about the movie within a year. So needless to say, the hype for a Batman Begins sequel was much higher than that of a Superman Returns sequel. However, Warner Bros. still had full intentions of making one. It was going to be called Superman the Man of Steel, and Brian Singer would have returned to the director's chair, and he fully intended to address some criticisms leveled at the first movie, such as the poor pacing. He basically compared it to Star Trek The Motion Picture, how it was this slow, methodical movie that took its time and kind of bored the shit out of people, compared to Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, which was a lot more action-oriented. That's basically what he wanted to do for this movie. So hopes were high to get the movie in theaters for 2009, but it had to get pushed because he decided to go off to produce Trick or Treat, and then direct Valkyrie, and then it got pushed again due to the writer's strike. This movie would have once again starred Brandon Routh as Superman, Kate Bosworth as Lois Lane, Tristan Lake Leibu as Superman's son Jason, Sam Huntington as Jimmy Olsen, James Marsden as Richard White, Frank Langella as Perry White, Parker Posey as Kitty Kowalski, and Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor. The story would have revolved around the kryptonite landmass of Superman chucked off into space at the end of Superman Returns. It would have settled into orbit and attract other surviving Kryptonians, who apparently wouldn't have been evil, and would have simply been trying to make the kryptonite landmass into a proper home for themselves called New Krypton. Now I imagine this would have caused the main central conflict, which is whether mankind should leave the Kryptonians alone to do their thing, or attack them before they attack us, because they would after all believe that not every Kryptonian is going to be as good as Superman. Now as far as official villains are concerned, a few names are being thrown around, but all that's known for sure is that Lex Luthor would not be the primary antagonist this time around. That distinction seemingly would have gone to either Brainiac or Bizarro, though Brainiac seems to be the more likely choice. Basically, the plot outline would have centered around Brainiac arriving on Earth, being made aware of Superman and New Krypton's existence, thanks to one of his scout probes. Meanwhile, Metallo is also set to be a minor villain as well, being the same bank robber who shot Superman in the eye in the first movie. Movie. And I imagine he would have been turned into Metallo by Lex Luthor in order to get revenge on Superman. Either way, he was supposed to have been taken out in the opening scene anyway. Brainiac would then arrive on Earth in a humanoid form, pretending to be yet another Kryptonian survivor, who wants to use Kryptonian technology to help aid mankind during their struggles. And Superman disagrees with that, since he promised jor that he wouldn't interfere with mankind's natural progress, so he declines Brainiac's offer to work together. So now eventually Superman would have to basically stop a war, as Brainiac would cause international turmoil, and there would even be a scene depicting Superman helping Air Force pilots in an epic sky battle. The people and my opinion anyway, would also have likely turned on Superman more and more, as they wonder if Kryptonians are dangerous. Now later on, Brainiac would actually kidnap Superman's son Jason and bring him back to his ship. Inside, Superman would discover Brainiac's true computer form and would learn that a good portion of Krypton's quote-unquote survivors are really robotic clones. Now this next part is admittedly weird, so take it with a grain of salt. <sighs> Brainiac says that he's choosing Jason to be his human form. He enters Jason's body, causing him to rapidly age to adulthood and allowing him to obtain all of Superman's powers. Superman would then be forced to kill his own son after not being able to find a way to get Brainiac out of his body. Oh boy, that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> 
So I imagine this movie would have dealt with a lot of complex moral themes, such as the fact that Jason and Richard still don't know that Jason is Superman's son, as well as the fact that Lois is obviously still attracted to Superman, even though she's marrying Richard, or possibly already has by this point. So Superman would probably have had to learn to move on from the people he loved in order to keep them safe, as well as not to be a homewrecker, obviously. Now, I do think, however, that the secret of Jason's parentage would be revealed to him in this movie, probably with Jason maybe even discovering it for himself as he learns more about his powers, because he would be 9 or 10 now. Now, I also imagine Superman's secret identity as Clark Kent would be revealed to Lois and Jason, because I just feel like it would have to be by this point. So as for the impact this movie would have on the future of DC movies, believe it or not, I actually don't think it would affect it that much. Because honestly, as I said, the interest really wasn't there. Nobody really wanted to do this movie. Warner Brothers really didn't want to do it. They wanted to reboot. Brian Singer secretly regretted leaving the X-Men franchise, and he really wanted to go back to it. The people didn't like the first movie very much either. And honestly, I don't think that many people would be that interested in seeing a sequel. So I imagine the box office for the sequel would have been even less. So especially if they if they had stuck with that weird plot point of Superman fighting his son. Now, if this movie was somehow successful, I imagine that things would have actually stayed relatively simple for the DCEU. Just replace Man of Steel with Superman Returns 3, and then put Brandon Routh in the other movies after that, and voila! Everything stays the same for the DCEU. I do still think that Brian Singer would leave Superman after the second movie to do X-Men, so maybe Zack Snyder would have directed the third movie as, you know, not Man of Steel, but a direct sequel to Superman the Man Man of Steel. So that was Superman Returns 2 or Superman the Man of Steel. So what do I think about it? Uh, okay, well, I, I went on Reddit to see what people thought of this movie, and surprisingly, a lot of people really liked it. Like, a lot of people actually said they liked it more than Henry Cable's Man of Steel. And I gotta say, I don't see it. Um, okay, let, let me get the positives out of the way first. I love the idea of this being more action-oriented, because I've defended Superman Returns in the past. I don't think it's that bad. It's like a B minus, around the same place I put the first Amazing Spider-Man, uh, but it could have been so much better. And one of my main problems with it is that it's so badly paced. It's a very long movie and it feels it, uh, and they don't really justify its length, in my opinion. There's not nearly enough action going on in the first one, and I love the idea of this one being more action-oriented. If ever a sequel needed to be more action-oriented, this one needed it. Um, I also love the idea of Brainiac being the main villain. Seriously, how have we been make how have they been making superman movies for this long and we still haven't gotten brainiac in the movies like seriously this is getting ridiculous he needs to be in the movies by now if the superman reboot series that jj abrams is doing doesn't have brainiac then i'm gonna call them out on it uh, it's getting ridiculous um or if they had gone with bizarro same thing bizarro definitely should be in the movies i know he's a little bit of a silly character but i think that they could do a gritty update of him if they needed to but considering that Superman Returns was supposed to be a slightly more campier movie because it was trying to be like the Christopher Reeve movies, I think he would have fit in fine. And I even like the stuff about New Krypton. I know I know it's going to bother some people, the New Krypton stuff. I know some people are going to say it's not realistic uh, for a, a landmass, like a continent, to just start floating uh, in orbit. And I agree. I admit it's a little weird, but it's Kryptonian technology. I'll take it. Whatever. Um, <laughs> and I also think it's a bit weird to draw in Kryptonian survival. Although it would have turned out, I, I guess, that they would be clones. It, it, it does kind of sound like Brainiac's plan was a little overcomplicated. That's my first criticism. His plan seems a little overcomplicated. Um, and the, the, that ending with him becoming Jason and, you know, aging Jason up and they fight, you know, Superman. It, it's just... It sounds silly to me. Um, I know that, that some people apparently really like it, but I really don't. I'm sorry, I, I don't think that sounds good at all. I think that sounds really silly. Um, I think it would be unintentionally funny, and if it didn't come off as funny, it would just come off as like needlessly depressing. You know what I mean? Like, Not every superhero movie needs to be dreary, and I think in the 2000s especially, they kept making that mistake. They kept making the mistake of thinking superhero movies couldn't be fun, and this movie sounds like it would have made that same mistake. And while it was never officially specified, I really, really hope that they weren't planning to do the whole Superman Lois will they won't they thing again because, man, it was a real weak spot of Superman Returns as well. Um, I really don't think that their chemistry was good at all. Brandon Routh and Kate Bosworth just have no chemistry and maybe it would have gotten better in this. I don't know. But then you still have the fact that she was still been with Richard seemingly and, you know, uh, 
I just don't think it's a good relationship idea. I think that they kind of ruined the idea of Superman and Lois being together in this universe as soon as they made the decision to have her marrying Richard. I know they weren't married yet, but like, I don't know. I just think it, it puts a real black mark on the idea of these two being a thing. And this is going to be really controversial, I know. But if it were up to me, I actually would have put him with Kitty Kowalski because she seemed like a villain like set on a path of redemption, in my opinion. You know, Lex Luthor sort of tried to kill her by cutting her brakes legitimately and almost killing her. Um, and Superman was genuinely nice to her. And I know he, he friend zoned her. But like, you know, she, you know, stopped Lex Luthor from making more kryptonite land masses. So I think that she definitely is a character that could have been redeemed. And honestly, if it were up to me, I would have had her play Lois Lane instead of Kate Bosworth. And I would have had Kate Bosworth playing Kitty. That's what I would have done if it were up to me. I know hindsight's 2020, but uh, Parker Posey, I'm sorry. She's just, she's better. Uh, she's a better actress, in my opinion, than Kate Bosworth. Don't kill me. So I think that would have been cool if they extended her role in this movie and sort of given her like a full on redemption where she betrays Lex Luthor. And speaking of that, Lex Luthor, I, I know about the problems with Kevin Spacey. Don't get me wrong. But this was before all that happened. And this was when he was still just a great actor. And honestly, this movie doesn't seem to mention him like hardly at all. Like besides the opening where he apparently would create Metallo, he seems really wasted. Like he's not in the movie nearly enough, in my opinion, from what from the sound of it anyway. I'm sure his role would have been bigger in the final version, but from this version, it sounds like his role is too damn small. And same with Metallo. Like, why would Metallo be a one-off villain that Superman beats in the opening 10 minutes? Like, that's such a waste, in my opinion. Like, that could have been something they built up. You know, like they could have had the same robber come back and then maybe Superman injures him by mistake or something like that. And then Luther turns him into Metallo for Superman Returns 3. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I just think that having him as a one-off, you know, opening scene villain is a really big missed opportunity. I really think they could build more there. You know, th that's just my opinion. I feel like they could have done more with that. Um, also, and here's the big one. Killing Jason. Uh, no. 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 Um, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I'm not one of those people that, that whines and complains about Superman not being able to kill. I'm not that guy. I, I think it's okay for Superman to kill if it's justified. But his own son... No, I'm sorry. It doesn't work. It's it's too dark for a series that's this campy, in my opinion. You know, it would it would just be too too damn much. And now the biggest thing that I think would be wrong with this movie is the director. And I'm not talking about the stuff that went on with Brian Singer, the sexual stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that Brian Singer didn't want to make it. Like, uh, you can tell he regretted it, and he later admitted in interviews he regretted doing Superman Returns. Like, he wished he had stuck around to do X-Men The Last Stand with Fox. And pretty much everybody wishes he had. You know? Because Brian Singer, say what you will, but he he knew the X-Men better than Superman, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna say Superman Returns is better than the first two X-Men movies or Days of Future Past. Like, I don't think anybody's gonna say that, you know? And I just think if you have an unmotivated director behind the camera, you're not gonna get as good of a movie Movie. You know what I mean? Like, he was motivated to do Superman Returns, and that movie was still kind of eh. So, like, imagine if they asked him to do a sequel that he really wasn't that interested in doing. Like, it just doesn't sound right. It, it sounds like a, a, it sounds like it would just be bad, in my opinion. Um, it's just bad circumstances, in my opinion. Because um, he was literally looking for ways out. Like, he was like, oh yeah, I want to go do Trick or Treat. Oh yeah, I, I can I just do Valkyrie, and then I'll come back. And then he's like, oh, and then, like, the writer's strike happened. It, you know, I, obviously he wasn't the cause for the writer's strike, but he, he, you know what I mean? He just seemed like he was looking for reasons not to do it. <laughs> he was looking for reasons to delay it and delay it. Um, and honestly, like, nobody really wanted this movie. That's the sad thing. Brian Singer didn't really want to direct it. Warner Brothers didn't really want to make it. They kind of wanted to reboot. And the people didn't really want it, you know, because yeah, people liked it when it came out, but as time went on, people didn't like it that much, you know? So... 
You know, yeah, I just think that Superman was better off being rebooted. I don't know if they got the reboot right with Man of Steel. I've always had mixed feelings on that movie. But overall, from the sound of it, I do think Man of Steel was better than what this would have been. I think some aspects of it would have been better. I think Brandon Routh would have given a much better Superman performance than he did in the first one. And that's saying something. I didn't even think he was that bad in Superman Returns. But I think by this point, he was a more experienced actor, and he would have really done a great job in the sequel better than the first one in my opinion um same with kevin spacey as lex Luthor, who might have been a little too campy in my opinion i think he might have been a little bit more serious in this and that would have been all the better uh kate bosworth as i said she might have gotten better but eh, no i in my opinion eh, i i don't really care if her role was small or big uh because i i just didn't care much for her interpretation of lois lane honestly but it might have gotten better who knows but either way that's my opinion on superman returns to slash superman the man of steel uh let me know in the comments down below would you have rather seen this movie the man of steel uh do you like it more do you like this script more than man of steel or are you happy that we that this never happened and we were and we're on the timeline we're on now um also let me know what you think of brandon routh as superman i'd like i'd love to see if people think he's as underrated as i think he is uh give me more what if recommendations in the comments down below as well uh give this video a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends and all your various social media platforms and i'll see everyone in the next video.